Hello, welcome to all our God Day viewers uh, on Revelation TV. It, this is Derek Walker, the pastor of the Oxford Bible Church. And today in our morning devotional, I want to bring us to Psalm 91, this wonderful psalm of God's protection and how uh, valuable this psalm is to us, especially in these times. But, but truly, we do live in a dangerous world and a world that is under uh, the curse because of sin. And yet God offers us his presence and his protection for us to walk in. And this psalm gives us the key to how we can walk in divine protection and blessing. And so let's go to Psalm 91 right now. And it says in verse one, which is a summary really of the whole psalm, he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And this word Almighty, the Almighty God is El Shaddai. So I like to say that those who dwell in the secret place will dwell under the shadow of Shaddai. Praise God. And so what is this place? Well, we're told that it's secret. That means it's inaccessible to the enemy. The enemy can't get to it. His forces cannot get to it and it's also most high because it's the secret place of the most high and so God who is far above all principalities and powers and everything this place is a place in God hallelujah and so it's out of reach of the enemy and here it, this is saying that God offers all believers uh, uh, the opportunity to dwell in the secret place of the Almighty but it's up to us to do that. Uh, and this Psalm gives us the promise that if we dwell in the secret place of the Most High, we will abide under the shadow of Shaddai. This word shadow means covering or shield or protection, just like uh, the roof of a building um, protects you from the hot sun. Uh, it, it creates a shadow under which you stand. Uh, that is God's protection over your life. And so think of the, the heat uh, of, uh, of, that's attacking you. If you put yourself under a covering, then you rest under the shadow of that. And so God says, I will be your shield. I will be your protection. If you trust under the shadow of my wings, you will be in under divine protection. And so he says it again in Psalm 32, verse 7. You are my hiding place. You will preserve me from trouble. You surround me with songs of deliverance. Psalm 27, 5 says, In the time of trouble, he will hide me in his pavilion, in the secret place of his tabernacle, where he dwells. He will hide me. He will set me on high upon a rock. And so this place is, is high. It's out of reach and it's the secret place of his dwelling. It's really the secret place is God himself. And he invites us to come into his presence. And as we do, we come under his protection, the shadow of Shaddai. Praise God. And um, verse one really summarizes the whole Psalm. It says, if you make the secret place your dwelling, you will be shielded from all the attacks of the enemy. And then as it goes through the psalm, it describes all the different things that threaten us in this life, uh, natural and spiritual. But he says, God will shield us if we dwell in his presence, in that secret place. And that place is the secret place of the Most High. And that's a clue as how we enter in that secret place. You have to acknowledge God as the Most High. In other words, God is higher than you. And you have to submit your soul to God. And the first thing to do in the morning is just to praise God and worship God and hallow his name and, and declare how wonderful he is. And, and as you do, you are submitting yourself to the Most High. And when you acknowledge God as high and lifted up above all your circumstances, above you, and as you submit to him, you actually enter into that secret place. You, if you're in pride that you are number one, then of course you will not enter into that secret place. Psalm 31:20 promises you will hide them in the secret place of your presence from the plots of man. So the secret place is the place of God's presence. 
Come into God's presence with praise and thanksgiving and you will begin to enter under the shadow of his wings. Jesus said we must do this, he says, purposefully. Matthew 6, 6, he says, when you pray, go into your room and when you've shut the door, uh, be purposeful in other words, in coming to God, pray to your Father who is in the secret place and your Father who sees in secret will reward you openly. And so this is saying that the Father is delighted when you come into that secret place. He says, you can come in, come to the Father. And as you come to the Father, you enter into that secret place. You, you have a private meeting with him and no one can disturb you. It's inaccessible to the enemy. And he will reward you openly. In other words, he is, he is pleased that you have done this. And he will reward you openly. And part of his reward is his divine protection starts coming over your soul and your body and your life. And so in Psalm 91 gives some wonderful promises to those who will dwell in the secret place of the Most High. And I just want to encourage you today, make that your aim. Come into the presence of God each day and, and let him cover you with the shadow of Shaddai, with his shield. And uh, that's how Jesus lived. I believe that's why the enemy couldn't touch him. Many times they tried to kill him, but they couldn't get close because he dwelt under the shadow of Shaddai and God protected him. And it was only at Gethsemane when he let that shield down on purpose in order to, to suffer and die for us, he deliberately handed himself over to his enemies. Only then was he vulnerable to them. But before that, he walked under the shadow of the Almighty. They couldn't touch him. Well, verse 2 tells us how we can enter the secret place. I believe this is a major key. And, and we said it's submission. And your f submission to God is only completed by your confession. See, it's one thing to believe what God says and accept it and embrace it, but it's fully, you do that fully only when you take his word and you speak it. And then you are submitting yourself to his word and you're saying, that is my reality. And so in verse two, this is how uh, you enter in. He, it says, I will say of the Lord, you are my refuge. You see, God says to us, I will be your refuge. I will be your strong tower. I will be your healer, but we have to receive that and we have to speak it. We have to say, I will say of the Lord, you are my refuge. I receive you as my refuge and my fortress, my God in him I will trust. And so as you say, Lord, you're my shield, Lord, you're my healer, Lord, you're my protector, you're my shield, you're my victory then that, become, that allows God, as it were, to be that to you because you, he needs your free will cooperation. And by believing it and speaking it, he becomes that to you in your life. David did this a lot in the Psalms. Psalm 18 too, he says, the Lord is my rock. He said, you've got to say it. The Lord is my rock and my fortress, and my deliverer, my God, my strength in whom I trust, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. Praise God. And uh, you have to make it personal. You have to say it boldly by faith. Uh, Lord, you are a shield to me. As Proverbs 18.10 says, the Lord, uh, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and are safe. And so when the pressure is on, we need to turn to the Lord as our refuge. We need to say, Lord Jesus, I run to you. Please cover me under the shadow of your wings. I call upon you to protect me. I enter into your secret place. I trust in you. You are my savior. You're my deliverer. You're my strong tower. You're my shield, my fortress. And say it out loud confidently. And that's how we put on the shield of faith. And so it's really a form of thanksgiving. We, we could do it like this. We can say, thank you, Lord. You are my righteousness. You are my shield. You are my deliverer. You are my victory. You are my healer. And so um, 
in verse, uh, verse 9, actually, um, I'm going to just retranslate it a bit because the translators miss the point. It really says, because you have said, the Lord is my refuge, the Most High has now become your salvation. In other words, he's saying, because you said, the Lord is my refuge, the Lord has now become your habitation. In other words, that's how you enter into the secret place. It's by saying, it's by claiming his promise. He offers himself to you as your protector, as your shield, but you've got to believe it and then you say, Lord, you are my shield. I embrace that reality. And when you do that, he says, you enter in. Let me read that again. Verse 9, because you have said the Lord is my refuge, the Most High is now become your habitation. Praise God. And so next we see the benefits of living in the secret place. Let's, verse 3, it says, surely he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler. Well, Satan sets, the fowler is the one who sets traps uh, and then for animals and then they get trapped and destroyed. And so Satan does set traps in our path. He sets up situations where we might get offended, where we might get distracted, where we might get tempted uh, to, to, towards evil. Um, and those traps are out there. But as we dwell in the secret place, we're giving, God is able to lead us so that we don't walk into those traps. He will protect us from those traps. He will deliver you from the snare of the fowler. And then it says, and he will deliver you from the perilous pestilence. And that's, of course, the disease. The, uh, he will deliver you from the dangerous disease. Praise God. He will cover you and with his health and his healing and his protection from that disease as you put yourself under his shadow of his wings. Because verse 4 says, he will cover you with his feathers and under his wings you will trust. Hallelujah. So it's up to us. We must deliberately trust ourselves under his wings, under his shield. And by saying, Lord, you are my shield. You are my healer. You are my protector. And it says, God will cover you. His covering will come over you. And, and the more you dwell in his presence, the more that, that comes true. And so every day, you start every day just by coming into his presence with praise and thanksgiving and start thanking him. Lord, you are my shield today. You're my protection today. You're my healer today. You're my victory today. You're my strong tower today. Praise God. God is offering that protection to us. Praise God. Uh, Psalm 17, 8 says, hide me under the shadow of your wings. We have, to, we have to call on God. It doesn't happen automatically. We have to call to him, hide me. He says, Psalm 36, 7, how precious is your loving kindness, O God. Therefore, the children of men put their trust under the shadow of your wings. Praise God. And um, Psalm 63, 7 says, it, it's a joyful place. You've been my help, therefore in the shadow of your wings I will rejoice. Hallelujah. Next, the next verse in Psalm 91 verse 4, he says, His truth, which means his faithfulness, shall be your shield and buckler. And so really meditating on God's faithfulness. Um, we know that he's true to his word. That is our shield and our buckler. But buckler, we... we we are assured that when God promises something, he means what he says. And, uh, and then it says in verse 5 that we will be protected from all attacks. He says, you'll not be afraid of the terror by night. And so this is protection against fear, uh, against nightmares, against anxiety at night particularly. In other words, God's shield will be over us as we sleep. He will deliver us from the terrors of night. Hallelujah. Uh, nor, he says, be we will not be afraid of the arrow that flies by day. You know, the enemy arrows that are designed to wound us, evil words and curses and 
things spoken against us, what this says is that we, if we live in the secret place, he will protect us. They will not touch us. They will, these arrows will bounce off our shields. Uh, and then verse 6, he says, we will not be afraid of the pestilence that walks in darkness. And that's talking about invisible diseases, you know, like, like the virus, for instance, it, you know, because God's protection covers us. Nor be afraid of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. And these are the, the visible disasters. Uh, but God will protect us from that, from those also. But only as we dwell in the secret place. Let that be our main priority, to come to God at the beginning of each day and, and, and come into his presence and come into that secret place where you can have a one-on-one -on -one time with the Lord. Praise God. And then he talks about miraculous protection in the, in the middle of danger. He says, verse 7, a thousand may fall at your side and 10,000 at your right hand. And I love this, but it will not come near you. This is supernatural protection. And I like to declare, it will not come near me. It will not come near me in the name of Jesus. And it, because no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Isaiah 54, he says, only with your eye will you look and see the reward of the wicked. You know, Noah had a secret place. It was his ark, wasn't it? And even though many got destroyed around him, because he trusted, and the ark is a picture of Christ, because he trusted in Christ, he was safe in that secret place. And uh, the Israelites had a secret place under the blood of the Lamb, didn't they? they, they at the Passover, they, they put blood on the doors of their houses. And they, they, while they were in the house under the blood, they were in the secret place of the, the Lord and the destroying angel, though it destroyed all the unbelievers, yet the Israelites were protected because they dwelt under the blood of the Lamb. They dwelt in the secret place of the Most High and God protected them. And in verse 9, he says, Because you have made the Lord my refuge, the Most High, your dwelling place. Now that... That is compressed language. It doesn't seem to make sense in English because we're meant to understand the meaning is this. Because you have made the Lord my refuge. In other words, because you've said the Lord is my refuge. Remember, that's what he did at the start. I will say of the Lord, you're my refuge. And now it says in verse 9, because you've made the Lord your refuge or because you have said the Lord is my refuge, as a result... The Most High is now become your habitation. In other words, that's how you enter into the secret place, by declaring, Lord, you are my refuge. You are my protection. You are my God. Hallelujah. And he says, as a result, verse, nine, verse 10, no evil will befall you. I love that. Nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. No evil will befall me, nor shall any plague come near my dwelling. Hallelujah. And uh, that's what we should confess. No evil shall befall me, nor shall any plague come near me or my dwelling. No evil will come near my home, no sickness near my body. Now, I'm not pretending that we all will all always live in perfect health, but we need to learn. And, and the more we put ourselves under God's shield, the more protection we will enjoy in our life. And it also we are promised angelic protection as a result of this. Verse 11, for he will give his angels charge over you to keep. Now, that you have at least one angel that is assigned to protect you, praise God, because Jesus talked about the angels uh, that children have and, uh, you know, we don't lose them as we grow up. And so he says, they will guard you in all your ways. So in other words, as, you're, as you walk with God, you have a personal bodyguard that will guard you. In their hands they will bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. And so believe in the ministry of angels, that, that you have an angel. And as you dwell in the secret place of the Most High, your angel is released. You see, if you're, if you're not walking in God and you're walking in pride and you're doing it yourself, 
then the angel is limited in what he can do for you. But the more you walk with God in the secret place, then the more you, the angelic ministry is released. And um, Satan actually used this verse to try and trap Jesus um, because he, he knew that Jesus claimed Psalm 91 all the time. And he said, it's like Satan said, okay, Jesus, you like Psalm 91 so much. Why don't you jump off the top of that, the pinnacle of the temple, claim the promise and the angels won't let you crash to the ground. And um, he actually twisted the scripture. If you look at when he quoted it in Matthew uh, 4, 6, he said, he changed in all your ways to at all times. In other words, this is an unconditional promise. Do what you want, even if it's not the will of God and the angels have to protect you. And Jesus saw through that. It's as you walk in the ways of God, and as you trust in his protection, as you humble yourself before God, then that, that protection is there. But that shows that uh, Satan knew that Jesus used that psalm a lot for his protection. Verse 13 talks about that we will have able, we'll be able to exercise authority over the power of the enemy. You will tread upon the lion. That's the aggressive form of evil. And the cobra, that is the manipulating, deceptive form of evil. The young lion and the serpent, you will trample underfoot. God will empower you to exercise authority over the forces of darkness and defeat them. Hallelujah. And then verse 14, I, we love the conclusion to this. It says, because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. And here's another clue how you enter the secret place. This is God speaking now. The finale of this psalm is God himself steps in and, and, and now speaks directly. Because he has set his love upon me. This is the man who's entered the secret place. How does he do it? He sets his love upon God. He says, God, I love you today. I praise you today. I worship you today. You are the most high God. You are my rock, my fortress, my deliverer. And God says, because he set his love on me, therefore I will deliver him. Hallelujah. And then it says, I will set him on high. In other words, I will lift him up into my secret place because he has known my name. And again, this person has chosen to love God and to know God. Uh, to know his name and to confess his name. Lord, you are my healer. You are my victory. You're my deliverance. Because he's known my name and because he's received what I offer him, uh, he will be set on high. And it says, he will call on me and I will answer him. And I will be with him in trouble. And I will also deliver him and honor him. Praise God. And then he says, with long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. And this is God's promise of long life. God will satisfy us with long life, not just long, many days, but good days. I will be, we will be satisfied when we come to the end of our life. And he says, I will show him my salvation. I will manifest my salvation to him. And so there are many blessings of dwelling in the secret place of the Most High. And so I'd like to just finish with this confession based on Psalm 91. I dwell in the secret place of the Most High. I abide under the shadow of the Almighty. For I say of the Lord, you are my refuge and my fortress, my God, in whom I trust. Surely God will deliver me from Satan's snares and from dangerous diseases. He covers me with his feathers, and under his wings I take refuge. I will not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day. I will not be afraid of invisible dangers or dramatic disasters. A thousand may fall at my side and ten thousand at my right hand, but it will not come near me. Because I have declared the Lord is my refuge, the Most High has now become my dwelling place. Therefore no evil shall befall me or mine. 
nor shall any plague come near my dwelling. It will not come near my body or my house, for he gives his angels charge over me to protect me in all my ways. I have authority over Satan. I will tread upon all the power of the enemy and trample it underfoot. Because I trust in God, he will deliver me and set me on high. He will answer my prayers. He will be with me in trouble and deliver me and honor me. With long life, he will satisfy me and show me his salvation. He will deliver me from evil and an early death. All these wonderful promises are here in Psalm 91, but they're not automatic. As I say, we, we have to get better. Uh, none of us live in the perfection of this. So we, our protection is in the Lord. Our protection is in getting closer to God. And let me say the best time to do this is at the start of the day, before all the other things, all the pressures crowd in on your mind and, and, um, and, and you haven't done the first thing, which is to come into the presence of God, to enter in to the, uh, under the shadow of Shaddai. And if you do that, you not only will be filled with his peace from within, but the shield, the invisible but very real shield of Shaddai, the shadow of Shaddai will cover you and protect you. And he will protect you against invisible foes as well as more obvious dangers. God is your shield. Trust in him today. And, and don't just, when you read the Bible, receive it, but also speak it. Say, God, you are my shield. You are my healer. You are my victory today. That's how you submit to the word of God, by believing it and by speaking it. And when you submit, when you humble yourself under the word, he will exalt you into that place, the secret place of the Most High. God loves you and he wants to do it all for you. Amen.